Anyone who has played multiple trading card games has probably noticed that a lot of them use a very similar color system to divide their effects into different color factions. While there's plenty of variation out there, a five color system specifically using the colors of white, black, blue, red, and green is surprisingly common. There's a couple of different reasons for this, and some are admittedly pretty obvious. However, there are a few other reasons past the obvious ones why 5 is a magic number, and there's quite a lot of different factors that are pulling games towards this standard. Before digging into the reasons games use 5 colors specifically, it's worth going over why games divide their cards into colors at all. Color is the most straightforward way to quickly and obviously communicate a game's faction system. Faction systems are important to divide up effects in ways that ensures that the best decks aren't just homogenous piles of the best cards. With a faction system, if a player wants to use a deck that is using destruction effects and big powerful creatures, for one example, they might struggle to access card draw and direct damage. Trading card games are known for the large number of possible decks and strategies that they support, and games without a faction system have a bad tendency to fall into one deck metas. Early Yu-Gi-Oh, for example, didn't have a relevant faction system, and for a while the game only really had one best deck. Even once more deck varieties started to enter the game, they were based on wildly different win conditions. Real variety in the decks available in the game only really started to show up once they introduced a faction system based on archetypes. So if a faction system is important and colors are the most straightforward way to implement one, why five colors specifically? And why always the same five colors? To start, let's get the obvious out of the way. Many of these games are riffs off of Magic the Gathering. Some of them are more direct riffs like Force of Will, and a lot more are indirect riffs, usually based off of Duel Masters. Duel Masters itself was made by Wizards of the Coast to closely resemble Magic without some of Magic's more esoteric design problems. Both Magic and Duel Masters are hugely influential games, so it's not surprising that a lot of games out there have since borrowed several of their mechanics. This explains games like Force of Will or Build Divide, but the system also shows up in games which are substantially different from Magic the Gathering and Duel Masters, like Wacross and ZX. There's actually a surprisingly limited range of options when you're deciding on how many colors to support in a game. Too few colors and you're not going to get the differentiation of decks that's the whole purpose of a color system in the first place. On the other hand, if a game has too many, it's going to struggle to support them all, and it might also struggle to find a good variety of unique effects for each color without getting overly gimmicky. So just for fun, let's take a look at a couple numbers. Starting with something really basic, if your game has three colors, there are seven possible deck configurations. There's three monocolor decks, three dual color decks, and one deck using all three of the game's colors. Once you go up to a four color system, there are four monocolor options, six dual color combinations, four three color combinations, and of course, the option of using all four colors at once. This totals to 15 possible deck combinations. Moving up to 5 colors gives you 31 possible combinations. Each additional color you add is going to double the number of possible combinations, plus 1. So by the time you get up to 7 colors, you're up to 127 possible deck configurations, which is a ton to work through if you're new to the game and just trying to figure out what combination of effects are going to best match your playstyle. If we restrict ourselves to looking just at mono and dual color options, which are the most common, we still get a similar story. Four colors gives you 10 options here. Five gives you 15, six colors gives you 21 options, and once you add your seventh color, you're considering 28 possible configurations when you're trying to figure out what kind of deck you want to play. So given all of this, it's not surprising that almost every game falls into the four to six color range. And conveniently, 5 is right in the middle of that range. So if 5 is the magic number, why Magic's 5 colors specifically? With this one, we're back to the easy answers. This follows color theory. The primary colors of light are RGB, red, green, and blue. And if you add in the measures of brightness, you get light and dark, which gives you the traditional 5 colors of magic. Even if you prefer to use the more traditional red, yellow, and blue primary colors associated with paint pigments, 
If we assign white to yellow and black to purple, then out of the primary and secondary colours, the only odd one out is orange, and as someone who's worked in clothing retail in the past, I can tell you a lot of people are really bad at telling orange apart from red. So that is why the five colour system seen in the first trading card game ever printed keeps popping up in games year after year. While four colours and six colours are also fine options, don't feel too bad if you're designing a game and you end up back at a five colour system. Even if someone who has never heard of Magic the Gathering was tasked with creating a colour system for an expanding card game, there's a pretty decent chance they'd still end up with something similar to Magic's five colour faction system. So take it easy and have a fantastic day.